Hello again, everyone. welcome back to another video. In the last one I looked at Canon's flagship professional model um, in the autofocus era, that was the EOS-1. Only fair now to look at the, uh, the competitions, uh, what they had running, and this was the, the Nikon F4. Uh, this replaced the F3 in 1988, and this was uh, their first autofocus professional uh, grade camera. It's incredibly heavy metal, very solid. Um, it will survive a lot of. Are you going to focus today? Why can't you focus on that? There you go. Um, yeah, very solid. Unlike the Canon, this does have a removable um, viewfinders, as the Canon was all in one. The immediate thing that you notice is that where the Canon is all push buttons and LCD. This one is um, controls, knobs for everything. There's very little in the way of push buttons. There's no command dials or anything. This is far more traditional. So over here we have the, uh, the power switch. So it's locked. At the moment it's in single. And then you've got continuous high, about six frames a second. Uh, continuous low more like a, a motor, uh, an auto winder. There is a continuous silent mode as well as a self timer. That's all selected by this. And everything on this camera is protected with locks. So if you want to change the setting, you've got to push the lock down and then it'll slide. If you don't push the lock down, it is, as it says, locked. So I'll put it on single. Has all the normal modes. So you can see here it's got uh, manual aperture priority shutter priority program and it also has a program high mode this thing does not want to focus today does it as a focus high mode um, that tends to favor higher shutter speeds ideal if you're using uh, longer telephoto lenses for example sports or wildlife kind of photography so it still gives you the program option but with higher shutter speeds big shutter speed selector dial you can just turn to select 250 is the, the flash sync speed so the speeds run from four seconds all the way through to eight thousandth of a second we have uh, an x for flash sync uh, t for time b for bulb so big dial for that rather than push buttons exposure compensation the same with a lock on it so two stops of exposure compensation frame counter window multiple exposure lever so you can just pull this out and it won't advance the film but it will recock the shutter to allow for multiple exposures we have this button marked r1 and there's a corresponding one over here marked r2 and this is for uh rewinding you again this has got a lock on it you push the lock down pull this out at the same time push the lock in move this one down and it will rewind it's power rewind and power advance um, on the finder again we have three types of metering with this camera we have spot metering matrix metering and we also have the old center weighted average 60 percent in the middle 40 percent in the surrounding areas so again three different options for metering the matrix is the one i would use the most this little window here shows you compensation for your focusing screens they are interchangeable on this camera and sometimes the screens need compensation for the metering and this is you can dial it in and when you take this prism off there's a screw underneath that you can adjust this but that shows you the compensation that's being applied standard screen in here so it's zero the screen does fe feature focusing aid split image range finder etc in the middle so it's quite good with manual lenses has a blind on the back oh, a nice red color so you can't really miss that on this side over here we have the uh, speed selector with the film speed over here it does have dx coding but you can override that by using this again there's a lock on that to push that one down this is the release lever for the prisms they just slide on and off um, best to leave them on to be honest because there's a lot of contacts that connect uh, these together the metering is actually based the cells are in the camera body 
but there's a lot of communication. And matrix metering only works with this prism, it doesn't work with the other finders. This is the DP20, the standard prism that came on these. Rewind crank, if you want to rewind manually, you can do it the old fashioned way of lifting that up and winding it backwards, I suppose. I think you probably have to press these buttons down, maybe it's with a flat battery or something. Um, if you want to rewind halfway through a film, you can use these buttons as well. I think it auto automatically rewinds at the end of the film anyway. Red LED that comes on when it's um, rewinding film and also as an error message, if there's a problem with the camera, this will blink. Also, lug strap both side, a fairly plain back. There is an extra back available for these called the MF24, if I remember correctly, which is a bit like a data back. It does add some useful features, um, things like um, exposure bracketing, etc. They're controlled through the back. And there's some nice features like you can lock an autofocus focus point, and when something's in the point, it'll take a picture, which could be quite useful. But that's something extra you got to buy, although it was standard on the E version. There's three variations of these. There's an F4, F4S, which is this one with the MB21 grip. And then there's a, an F4E, which was the last of them, which came with a bigger grip and uh, the MF24 back as well. Battery check function down here, a couple of LEDs. Um, you can run it on uh, NICADs or you can run it on... Uh, AA batteries, which is what I'm using. On the front, a flash sync connection up here. I think we also have a cable release socket down here, if I remember correctly, as well. Lens release button, so that's to release the lens if you want to remove it. Um, also on Nikon cameras, the focus selector switch is on the body. The focus motor is actually built in the body. This is the difference between Nikons and Canons. Canons, the focus motor is in the, each lens. As in the Nikons, it's in the camera body. So you've got manual, single shot, or continuous, same as Servo AI, say, on the, on the Canons. See the lens mount. This has got a body cap on it. You'll notice it does have an AI coupler up here. Which is a carryover from the uh, the F3, and it also can be moved out of the way, which means the camera will accept pre AI lenses. They're the ones that don't have the AI coupling on them, so you can move that out of the way in case it gets damaged. In that case, it's going to be stop down metering only, as with the AI lenses onwards, it's going to be full aperture metering. You can see there, there's the connector for the, uh, the focus motor that uh, connects with a, a little screw on the back of the uh, the lenses and twists to adjust the focus. Very simple system. Up here we have a depth of field preview. You notice that lever there moves, it closes the aperture down so you can get an idea of the depth of field. And that's also combined with the mirror lockup function so you can put the mirror out of the way to avoid mirror slap. It will take the very wide angle fisheye lenses with, without any problems. You have an autofocus, so you can push that down to lock the autofocus. It's also lockable. Um, the AF lock can be locked. Sounds a bit strange, but yeah. And we have the uh, same thing for exposure. Where we can lock the exposure and then recompose the image. There's a little light in there. I think that's self-timer related, if I remember correctly. I never, I never take selfies. There is illumination for the... Uh, all the screens and everything inside so you can see what you're looking at all the information is available in the viewfinder it's got a full uh, display readout of everything batteries i say this one's running on aas so you don't do this little catch at the bottom and then this slides down you can see there's three double a batteries that slot into that part of it and then there's also three that live in this bottom down here as well and there is a selector switch in this bit God, I'm really struggling with focus today this is where you select between NICAD or LR6 I'm not quite sure why you have to do that but uh, I don't think people really use NICADs very much nowadays double A's are available everywhere 
that this bit just slides back in. This un unscrews, it mounts via the, uh, the tripod mount. That goes back on there. There is a vertical shutter release as well on this side here. This is my second F4. I've got two of them now. Um, remote release connector underneath that plug. There should be one in there as well, but they often get lost. That's for external flash. There is a hot shoe, of course, dedicated. Speed lights can be used with it. It will even give you uh, TTL flash exposures. But yeah, it's a chunky old beast. Quite heavy, but it's quite nice. I quite like the ergonomics. I think generally the ergonomics on the Nikon cameras are better than they are on the Canons. This one I find more comfortable to use. Although I do quite like the uh, the push buttons on, on the Canon, if I'm honest. But I find generally Nikons are, are far nicer in the hand uh, than, than Canon ones are. Lens compatibility, near enough every lens that Nikon have made will work on it. Like I say, pre-AI would be stop-down metering, AI onwards um, with an aperture ring are fine. Um, this is a, a gelded or a G-series lens. you notice there's no aperture ring on these. So this will focus, but it will only really work in um, shutter priority mode. So you select the shutter and the camera chooses the appropriate aperture or in program mode that's the only real restrictions with these this is the one i use as a standard lens on it which works quite well apart from it's only in those two modes but if you don't like the aperture that it selects just change the shutter speed and the aperture changes correspondingly so i don't really see it as a big issue and this lens is super light it doesn't really match the camera in terms of build quality <laughs> it's not a lot of metal in that I'd say this is a pre-AI lens, early version, scalloped. The forks on this are irrelevant. It doesn't make any any difference. These are used on the older cameras for me to couple in. And what we got here? Oh, this is the macro, I think, isn't it? Yeah. yeah focus there. Yeah, you are. So you can see this has got the AI coupling and that tells the camera body what aperture you selected. Right. Let's uh, try putting some film in this bad boy. Loading and unloading, very nice and simple. To open the back, it's pull up on this lever, but you'll notice it's locked like everything. There's safety locks on every part of this camera. And you can see the inside, vertical shutter. It's got some sort of quick load system on it because it's got the, the dot here. There's the connections for the, uh, the data back. It does read DX codes, like I think I said earlier. But pretty standard layout inside. So you just take your film. This one's non-DX because this is just a, a test sample in a reloadable cassette. So you pop your film in on the side over here. He says. Pull your leader across. Make sure it's lined up. Probably gone a bit too far with that now. Your leader across, make sure it's going to line up with the sprockets. This film's a bit curly now. Trouble reusing film all the time. Oh, it's off. That's why. What's going on? Put that on manual. 125th. There you go. That's the film loaded. Very quick. You can see it's on frame number one. So it's reasonably noisy. It's not. It's not too bad. So that's the single mode. And you've got continuous high. Yeah, that's an expensive way of shooting the film. Although it's not super quick to be honest. Six frames a second is not is not fast fast really for film camera. I say more like a, an auto winder, and then we have the uh, continuous silent mode. What it's doing is it's delaying the drop back of the mirror, it's holding the mirror up so that it's trying to reduce the noise. Quite, quite interesting. 
interesting. And then finally, we have the uh, the self timer. I find the bit you're supposed to turn. There you go. The self timer mode. Yeah, as I thought, it flashes. I don't think this one beeps at all. There we go. Yeah, self timer, pretty standard. But yeah, all in all, more traditional layout. The weakness with the Nikon systems really was their um, their lack of a vision for autofocus. Nikon never really got it right. Um, Nikon had ruled the professional market through the uh, the 60s, the 70s, and, and most of the 80s. Um, Canon wasn't number one. The Canon F1 never really hit it big time in the professional market. It was always the F, the F2, and the F3. But um, Canon wanted to become market dominant. That's why they sort of scrapped the FD system and moved to the uh, the EF system. And it's really about that time that you started to see the, the, the growth in the number of white telephoto lenses at sporting events, signifying Canons. Um, it was really their autofocus was better. This is only single point autofocus, like the, like the earlier EOS one. The one N had five, so that was a bit more advanced. But yeah, Nikon kind of lost out in the autofocus wars uh, to Canon. It's when Canon really started to take off. Nice camera, big, solid, chunky. Depends if you prefer dials or you quite like push buttons. Um, and it depends on your lenses as well. Um, I've got a lot of EF glass, so um, I quite like the Canons. I'm starting to grow my Nikon lenses. Um, I like the F5 and I like the F3. I've got three of those. They're my favourite ones of the Nikons. Highly recommended. Not that expensive. You can get a really nice minty one for about £200. I can't remember what I paid for this one. The last one I bought, the one with the damaged batteries where they delete, was about £65. Um, for that price, it's worth buying even for bits because the prison Pinder alone is probably worth more than that. But yeah, nice cameras. Highly recommended. That was Nikon's professional model during the uh, the late 80s and early 90s. It was replaced by the F5 in 96, I believe. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Comments, questions, queries as usual. Please like and subscribe. We're getting very near to the 2,000 subscri subscribers now. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.